Please stand and face the back. Good morning. As we mark the beginning of this holy week, we begin our celebration in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. My friends, may the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. My brothers and sisters, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Today we gather together to herald with the whole church the beginning of the celebration of the Lord's Paschal Mystery. That is to say, his passion and resurrection. For it was to accomplish, accomplish this mystery that he entered his own city of Jerusalem. With all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city of our salvation, following in his footsteps, so that being made by his grace, partakers of the cross, that we too may also share in his resurrection, in his life. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-loving God, we ask that you sanctify these branches with your blessing, that we who follow Christ the King in exaltation may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him, for he lives and reigns forever and ever. My friends, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. When Jesus and his disciples drew near to Jerusalem, to Bethpage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and he said to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately on entering it, you will find a colt tethered on which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone should say to you, why are you doing this? Reply, the master has need of it, and will send it back here at once. So they went off and found a colt tethered at the gate outside on the street and they untied it. Some of the bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? They answered, just as Jesus had told them to, and they permitted them to do it. So they brought the colt to Jesus and put their cloaks over it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road and others spread leafy branches that they had cut from the fields. Those preceding him as well as those following kept crying out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David that is to come. Hosanna in the highest. The gospel of the Lord. My brothers and sisters, very much like the crowds who acclaim Jesus in Jerusalem, let us now go forth in peace. Amen. Please hold your branches high. I'll glory about an honor. All glory, Elizabeth. The entrance hymn is number 143. All glory, laud, and honor, number 143. Mm.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-loving God, who was an example of humility for the human race, to follow cause our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so to merit a share in the resurrection of new life. We make this prayer through Christ, who is our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord has given me a well-trained tongue that I, might, that I might know how to speak to the weary a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. The psalm response is, my God, my God, oh, why have you abandoned me?
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found in human appearance, he humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. The Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread were to take place in two days' time. So the chief priests and the scribes were seeking a way to arrest Jesus by treachery and put him to death. They said, Not during the festival, for fear that there might be a riot among the people. When Jesus was in Bethany, reclining at table in the house of Simon the leper, a woman came with an alabaster jar of perfumed oil, costly, genuine spikenard. She broke the alabaster jar and poured it on his head. There were some who were indignant. Why has there been this waste of perfumed oil? It could have been sold for more than 300 days wages and the money given to the poor. They were infuriated with her. Let her alone. Why do you make trouble for her? She has done a good thing for me. The poor you will always have with you. And whenever you wish, you can do good to them. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anticipated anointing my body for burial. Amen, I say to you. Wherever the gospel is proclaimed to the whole world, what she has done will be told in memory of her. Then Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went off to the chief priests to hand Jesus over to them. When they heard Judas, they were pleased, and they promised to pay him money. Then Judas looked for an opportunity to hand Jesus over. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, 
When they sacrificed the past over lamb, his disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city and a man will meet you, carrying a jar of water. Follow him. Wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, The teacher says, Where is my guest room? where I may eat the Passover with my disciples. Then he will show you a large upper room, furnished and ready. Make the preparations for us there. The disciples then went off, entered the city, and found it just as he had told them. And they prepared the Passover. When it was evening, Jesus came with the twelve, and as they reclined at table and were eating, Jesus said, Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and to say to him, one by one, Surely it is not I. Surely it is not I. One of the twelve, the one who dips with me into the dish. For the Son of Man indeed goes, as it is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It will be better for that man if he had never been born. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them and said, Take it. This is my body. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, and they all drank from it. This is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed for many. Amen, I say to you, I shall not drink again the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Then after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, All of you will have your faith shaken, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be dispersed. But after I have been raised up, I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though all should have their faith shaken, mine will not be. Amen, I say to you, This very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. Even though I should have to die with you, I will not deny you. And they all spoke similarly. Then they came to a place named Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John, and began to be troubled and distressed. Then he said to them, My soul is sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and keep watch. He advanced a little and fell to the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass him by. He said, Abba, Father, all things are possible to you. Take this cup away from me, but not what I will, but what you will. When he returned, he found them asleep. 
He said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not watch for one hour? Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing again, Jesus prayed, saying the same thing. Then he returned once more and found them asleep, for they could not keep their eyes open, and they did not know what to answer him. He returned a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Is it enough? The hour has come. Behold, the Son of Man is to be handed over to sinners. Get up, let us go. See that my prayer is at hand. Then, while he was speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, accompanied by a crowd with swords and clubs who had come with the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. His betrayer had arranged a signal with them, saying, The man I shall kiss is the one. Arrest him and lead him away securely. Judas came and immediately went over to him and said, Rabbi, and Judas kissed Jesus. At this, they laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. One of the bystanders drew his sword, struck the high priest's servant, and cut off his ear. Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to seize me? Day after day I was with you, teaching in the temple area, yet you did not arrest me, but that the scriptures may be fulfilled. And they all left Jesus and fled. Now a young man followed him, wearing nothing but a linen cloth about his body. They seized him, but he left the cloth behind and ran off naked. They led Jesus away to the high priest, and all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes came together. Peter followed him at a distance into the high priest's courtyard and was seated with the guards, warming himself, at, warming himself at the fire. The chief priests and the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death, but they found none. Many gave false witness against him, but their testimony did not agree. Some took the stand and testified falsely against him, alleging, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple made with hands, and within three days I will build another not made with hands. Even so, their testimony did not agree. The high priest rose before the assembly and questioned Jesus, saying, Have you no answer? What are these men testifying against you? But Jesus was silent and answered nothing. Again the high priest asked him and said to him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed One? I am, and you will see the Son of Man, seated at the right hand of the power, and coming with the clouds of heaven. At that the high priest tore his garments and he said, What further need have we of witnesses? You have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? They all condemned him as deserving to die, some began to spit on him. They blindfolded him and struck him and said to him, prophesize, and the guards greeted him with blows.
While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the high priest's maids came along. Seeing Peter warming himself, she looked intently at him and said, You too were with the Nazarene, Jesus. I neither know nor understand what you are talking about. So he went out into the outer court. Then the cock, cock crowed. The maid saw him and began again to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. Once again he denied it. A little later the bystanders said to Peter once more, Surely you are one of them, for you too are a Galilean. I do not know this man about whom you are talking. And immediately a cock crowed a second time. Then Peter remembered the word that Jesus had said to him. Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. He broke down and wept. As soon as morning came, the chief priests with the elders and the scribes, that is, the whole Sanhedrin, held a council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate questioned him, Are you the king of the Jews? You say so. The chief priests accused him of many things. Again, Pilate questioned him, have you no answer? See how many things they accuse you of. Jesus gave him no further answer, so that Pilate was amazed. Now on the occasion of the feast, Pilate used to release to one of them a prisoner whom they requested. A man called Barabbas was then in prison, along with the rebels who had committed murder in a rebellion. The crowd came forward and began to ask him to do for them as he was accustomed. Pilate answered, Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? For he knew that it was out of envy that the chief priest had handed him over. But the chief priest stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate again said to them in reply, Then what do you want me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? Crucify him. Why? What evil has he done? Crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas to them, and after he had Jesus scourged, handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers left, left, led Jesus away inside the palace, that is the praetorium, and assembled the whole cohort. They clothed, clothed him in purple and weaving a crown of thorns, placed it on him. They began to salute him with, Hail, King of the Jews! And kept striking his head with a reed and spitting upon him. They knelt before him in homage. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloth, cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him out to crucify him. They pressed into service a passerby, Simon, a Syrian, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. They brought Jesus to the place of Gagatha, which is translated, place of the skull. There they gave him wine drugged with myrrh, but he did not take it. Then they crucified Jesus and divided his garments by casting lots for them to see which each would take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, the king of the Jews. With him they crucified two revolutionaries, one on his right and one on his left. Those passing by reviled him, 
shaking their heads and saying, Aha! You who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself by coming down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests with the scribes mocked him among themselves and said, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let Christ, the King of Israel, come down now from the cross that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with Jesus also kept abusing him. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which is translated, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, Look, he is calling Elijah. One of them ran, soaked a sponge with wine, put it on a reed, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see if Elijah comes to take him down. Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. Please kneel. The veil of the sanctuary was torn in two, from top to bottom. When the centurion who stood facing him saw how he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was the Son of God. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of younger James and of Joses, and Salome, these women had followed Jesus when he was in Galilee and ministered to him. There were also many other women who came up with him to Jerusalem. When it was already evening, since it was a day of preparation, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph Armethia, distinguished member of the council, who was himself awaiting the kingdom of God, came and courageously went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate was amazed that Jesus was already dead. He summoned the centurion and asked him if Jesus had already died. And when he learned of it from the centurion, he gave the body to Joseph. Having bought a linen cloth, he took Jesus down, wrapped him in the linen cloth, and laid him in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. Then Joseph rolled a stone against the entrance to the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Jose, watched when he was laid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise God, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Again, a special good morning to everyone gathered here. I have to be honest, especially this time of year, if there is an expression that really gets underneath my skin, it's an expression that says, well, spring is in the air. 
I think we've been reminded that there's really no truth to that, at least not right now. But that's why we live in the Northeast and that's what we have come to expect. And yet on this special day, a day that we refer to as Palm Sunday, we stand with Christians throughout the world. And we remember this special event, but we also mark the beginning of a week that we call Holy. And yet we also recognize that it is not only uh, a week that allows us to remember some of the significant events that were at the end of Jesus' life before his horrific death and ultimately his resurrection. But it's an opportunity for us to make these experiences our own. Again, as we try to journey with Jesus um, and to experience life, death, and resurrection for ourselves. And of course, as we stand with those people welcoming Jesus on the streets of Jerusalem, we too cry out, Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And of course, the events that we just heard from the Passion of Mark, it is definitely high drama. It could easily be identified as a Hollywood blockbuster. It's got all of the ingredients, a rich plot, colorful characters, betrayal, high emotion, intrigue, and countless surprises with an end which surprises us more than anything, not what we were expecting. Having an impact that will change life for everyone forever. Undoubtedly, one of the most key characters in the story, and of course there are many, is Peter. He's somebody that we could easily identify with. Of course, he's the first chosen. He's the first apostle. He's the one to whom the keys of the kingdom eventually were given. And yet, when identifying Peter, what was so special about him? Not really too much. He was poor, he was uneducated, and typical of many of the people of that time, he was a fisherman. And of course, his experiences with Jesus, however brief, allowed him and de demanded of him to kind of drop everything that he was doing and said, I think I want to follow this guy this preacher, this miracle worker, this rabbi from Jerusalem. And of course, as the story unfolds, some of Jesus' predictions about the future and what's going to hold suddenly come to be true. And as we know, of course, after Jesus' arrest, Peter is standing with the other disciples and the crowd and the people in the, in the city. And they are contemplating what has transpired. They're standing around the fire Probably there's lots of tension and fear, but they wait around in silence, anticipating what's gonna happen next. Peter undoubtedly is filled with his own fear and worry, but of course suddenly he is spotted, he's recognized by an outsider. Not only one, two, but three people eventually identify this Peter as a friend, as a follower, as a disciple of this Jesus. Of course, he boldly denies any affiliation with Jesus. Not me, I don't know what you're talking about. Never met him, don't have any clue who he is. But of course, after the third denial, the words of Jesus start to come true. Before the cock has crowed two times, you will have denied me three times. No doubt, Peter stands there, wearing the scarlet letter of shame and guilt, guilty of betrayal, the betrayal that was foretold. Probably feeling like a loser, a nobody, and probably in disbelief that what Jesus said actually came true. Meanwhile, of course, Jesus has been found guilty. Guilty of blasphemy. And as a result, he's now paraded around the palace courtyard where the fire of shame and remorse is held by all who stand around. The silence of the onlookers speaks volumes. And of course, as Jesus passes by, he looks closely into the eyes of Peter. But of course, he looks at him not with a sense of judgment, with anger, with rage, almost communicating, how could you? What did I do that was so bad? Instead, he looks at Peter with love, a love that hopefully one day will be returned. And here we are, the community of St. Francis, people who call ourselves Catholic Christians some 2,000 years later. We take this special time 
this time that we call Holy Week. And as stated, this isn't just about remembering events that happened long ago. Instead, it's taking these events and making them our own. And as we stand around the fire, holding on to a silence that is probably kind of numbing, we consider all that has occurred. This miracle worker, this preacher, this rabbi from Nazareth, he's been found guilty. And yet, we come to discover maybe we too have been spotted by some outsiders. People who know that we are Catholic and Christian, that we go to church, and that this thing called faith is something we consider pretty important. And yet, we admit that our relationship with him is sometimes ambiguous and uncertain. We're not always as faithful as we'd like to admit. When life becomes messy and complicated and confusing, when we search for love and acceptance in all the wrong places, we slowly discover that the life choices that we have been making are destructive and hurtful. Not just to who we are and who we say we are, but to the people that we love and that we care about. Our one main priority about our own comfort and our own livelihood is the top priority that we hold on to. But our silence speaks volumes. Our relationship with this preacher from Nazareth is something that, when convenient, we put it on the shelf, at least for now. And yet, as he parades around the courtyard, he looks at us in pretty much the same way that he looked at Peter. He looks at us with love, with the hope and a longing that one day we might be able to return that love and bring an end to our own denial and our sense of betrayal so that we too may be able to cry out with true credibility and sincerity, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. May God's peace and all that is good be with you. Together we now stand in one voice and one heart, and we profess our creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, the only Son of our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and on the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We now bring our own prayers, our needs, and our hopes before the Lord. Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. For individuals who betray their friends, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For women and men who first look after their own needs, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For people who rush to judgment and violence without searching the truth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For men and women who regret the choices of their lives, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for people in authority who shirk their responsibility to seek after justice. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For persons who risk speaking truth to power, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For individuals who have committed criminal acts, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For people who bear the inconvenient and heavy burdens of others, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For people who gloat over the misfortunes of others, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For individuals who risk being identified with the disposed of society, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For women and men who are falsely accused and condemned and have no recourse against the evil structures of society, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For people who are grieving and for our dead in Christ, including Gloria M. Johnson, Francis R. Johnson, Francis J. Johnson, and Joseph Carey, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious and loving God, we ask that you continue to pour forth your spirit upon all of us gathered here. Dispel the darkness of our hearts and of our world. Grant that we may always have a correct faith and a certain hope and a perfect charity as we seek to carry out your holy and true command. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. As we prepare the Lord's table and ourselves to offer the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, let us join in singing hymn number 154, O Sacred Head Surrounded. Number 154, and we'll start with the B verses. <clears throat> <clears throat> Pray, my friends, that this, our sacrifice, will be acceptable to our good and loving God. Good and gracious God, 
on this holy day that marks the beginning of this holy week, we ask that you accept the special gifts that we bring to your table, the gifts of bread and wine and the gifts of our lives. May they always be acceptable and pleasing to you. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. My friends, the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, almighty and ever-loving God, and through your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for all sinners. He accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins, and his resurrection has given us new life. And so we now stand with all the angels and all the saints, Together we praise you, and as a joyful celebration, in one we acclaim. you indeed are holy, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending forth your Spirit upon them, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread into his sacred hands. He blessed it and broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper had ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, be poured forth for you and for all people, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in remembrance of me. The mystery of faith. And as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. We give you thanks that you have held us worthy to, <clears throat> to be in your presence and to minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking in the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Edward, our Bishop, and all your holy people your Son has gained for you. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. Welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy on all of us, we pray, that together with Mary, the Blessed Virgin Mother of God, with Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles, the martyrs, St. Francis of Assisi, and all the saints on whose constant intercession we rely for help. May we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For it is through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in union with the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And 
now together on one voice and one heart, we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, my peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. For you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. My friends, may the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all of you. Let us now share with one another a sign of Christ's peace. My friends, behold, behold the Lamb of God. Behold the one who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, nourished by these holy gifts, we humbly ask that just as through the death of your Son you have brought us hope and new life, so also by his resurrection may you lead us that we too may experience resurrection and the fullness of new life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Just a quick reminder, during the Holy Week, we ask that you please look at your bulletin. Holy Thursday and Good Friday services will be down in the South End at 6 o'clock and 8 o'clock, I believe. And uh, Holy Saturday will be here. Uh, and all are invited, bring family, friends, and loved ones. And then the Easter Sunday um, will be the Spanish. And uh, I think, uh, look at your bulletin. You'll understand it. My friends, the Lord be with you. Let us bow our heads and pray for God's blessing. May the blessings of Almighty God be upon all of us gathered here in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. My friends, our celebration has ended, but our lives continue. Let us go in peace to love God and to serve each other. Thank you, God. Have a wonderful rest of the week and make it holy. <laughs> Thank you, Father. I have a couple more reminders. Um, we have the potluck supper after the Holy Thursday service down at the South End. Um, please consider coming. It's a wonderful time of community. Um, and if you do plan to come, please sign up on the, there's a sign up sheet on the table over on Mary's side. Um, and also make sure you go check out the pancake breakfast after mass today. Uh, let's uh, add our final hymn. It's number 159. Were you there? Number 159. How are you?
Pardon me? Oh, yeah. I think he's home. 